Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to Cantina Social Hour. Good to see you. Good to be here. Hope everybody is doing fantabulously, fantabulously well. Um, I hope you had a great week. It's the weekend. I'm excited. I hope you are too for Cantina Social Hour, the best time of the week where we get to talk toys and I get to annoy you for a full hour to two hours. Um, all right. Thank you guys for being here. I want to see who is in the chat with us this fine Friday night. Um, welcome, welcome, Cantinians. Dodgson, how are you doing? Good to see you. Um, Adam, how's it going, Adam? I saw your comment on my video today. Thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, re we're back after two weeks uh, hiatus. Um, sweet. Paul, how are you doing, Paul? Good to see you as always. Uh, Pico B1, how are you doing? What is happening? Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, Jeff, how's it going? How are you doing, Jeff? Thank you for joining us tonight. Larry, been a while since I've seen you in the cantina. Thank you for coming in and and hanging out. Um, appreciate you being here. Jason, my friend, how is it going? How are you doing? I'm glad that you're here, Jason. Hope everything is well. Um, very cool, very cool. I've got Britt. Britt, how's it going? Britt, thank you for joining us. I uh, hope you are doing well. Jacob, how's it going? Jacob, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Mary, how's it going, my friend? Thank you for being with us tonight. Mary, we got some hot toys to talk about. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, Miami's nemesis, how is it going? Thank you for joining us tonight. Jake, how's it going? Good to see you tonight. Tim, how you doing, Tim? How are you doing? So good little crowd forming up here in the cantina tonight. Um, How's it going? I, I I've missed you guys. I've been off for two weeks. It's it's. Well, when did we do the last stream? It was like March, mid March, I think. It it feels great to be here. Thank you honestly for for hanging out with us tonight, Friday nights. I'm not 100. percent I'm still a little bit under the weather, but I am happy to be here, and I'm excited to talk toys and collectibles and everything that we're going to talk about. So if you're ready to be tormented, hang out with us tonight. Um, cool, cool. So great little crowd forming here in the cantina. Thank you guys for being here. So, all right. So as you guys know, we've had a bunch of new guests on the channel this year. Um, and you know, we're continuing that trend tonight to have somebody brand new first time in the cantina. Please be nice. Don't scare them off. Seriously, please don't do it. Um, I have Nilda from Appetite for Collectibles on YouTube in the house. Nilda, how's it going? Hi. How you doing? I love your little intro. It was so cute. <laughs> Thanks. I know I'm a goofball, but I love it. <laughs> cool. I'm really excited that you're here with us tonight. I know me too. I know we've been talking about it for quite some time, but like my work schedule and then I think like I got sick and then I got work. So it was just like a back and forth thing. Yeah. Well, glad that we were able to work it out and, uh, you know, we're here now. And, uh, so Nilda, this is your first time on in the cantina. Tell us a little bit about what you do on YouTube. So my name is Nilda. I have a YouTube channel that I called Appetite for Collectibles. I named it after my love for Guns N' Roses uh, um, album called Appetite for Destruction. And originally when I was doing YouTube, I was trying to interview local people in South Florida who had like crazy collections who you would never think that you would see them talk about their collections. Um, and I kind of did that in a way to like build some self-esteem so I can be able to do more, you know, in-camera interviews and like be able to talk. Um, and then eventually I just started doing like a whole bunch of unboxings, Star Wars news, and just interviewing some Star Wars celebrity guests that I was able to get on from time to time. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, and I saw you were going to have uh, Amy Allen next week, right? And, and who else is yeah. going to be on there? And I always botch up her last name, but it's uh, Michonne Baron, who played yes. uh, Aurora. So, I mean, who played Aurora Singh. So, I'm so, yeah. And both of them are really good friends. So it was cool to get the both of them. Because when I, me and Amy have been talking about it for years. Um, and then eventually she was like, hey, uh, Michonne finally is coming out in public. Like, would you want to have her on? And I was like, what? Yes, of course. Bring her on. <laughs> nice. That's really cool. Um, I met Amy at Celebration 4, I think in 2007, like a long time ago. 
And uh, yeah, she was really cool. Yeah, she's such a sweetheart. Like, I think I since the two of the well, the three of us have decided to do this episode. Um, we basically talk like every day. Um, Michonne has been trying to like get into Instagram and learn about the algorithm. So I've been like slowly teaching her of like, you could post this, do that. And like, she's just very open to, you know, like opinions and she just loves that stuff. So it's, it's really nice to like build a relationship with star Wars actors and like, just say like, Hey, I'm friends with them. Like they're super cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, it's it's funny, uh, and this is kind of like sidetracking for, for a second, but I saw a comment here um, from Britt uh, talking about the only thing that would scare people off is ghosts. That's like a recurring thing here. Mm -hmm. um, but it's funny, Britt, because, um, you know, now that I saw this, this comment, as I was getting ready uh, a moment ago in my bathroom, I had a, a bottle of nail polish remover and I looked at it and it was just going like, like rocking back and forth by itself. The only Wait, thing on the that have, was moving. Yeah. Do you have goats in your house? Uh, I have one. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, something, something. I'm, yeah. Yeah, I've had I've had some uh, ghost experiences from time to time. Ooh, we need to talk about that. Yeah, a little scary, but like, yeah, I've had some where like the hairs on the back of my neck have stood up, and I've not wanted to go in that room for quite some time. <laughs> nice, love it. We'll definitely we'll definitely touch on that towards the end. Um, yeah, so no, that that's great. So I mean, and the content is awesome. You know, I was watching through um, a little bit earlier, you know, some of the more recent videos that you've put up. And, you know, I, I love like the shorts and then just like all the different things that you have up there is is really great. Like the lives and all that. It's, it's really entertaining. And, you know, you know what, like even just looking like at your Instagram, like one thing that really comes through is like your passion for like Star Wars. Like there's a lot of people that that do Instagram, they do, um, you know, YouTube and whatnot. And, you know, you see them going through the motions of talking about Star Wars and in a very general sense, but you don't necessarily feel like that, like internal burning passion for Star Wars. But with your content, you absolutely see it 100%. So I really respect and appreciate that. I appreciate that. I, I tell people all the time, and it sounds like very emo for me to say this, but like, Star Wars has been the number one love I've always had. I'm going to be 37 this year, and I have loved Star Wars since I was a child. It's been the most consistent thing that's ever been in my whole entire life. And, you know, like when I'm sad, I watch Star Wars. When I'm happy, I watch Star Wars. And, you know, I know a lot of people out there are very disappointed about like how certain directions Star Wars has taken. But regardless for me, it's it's been my number one happy place. So I just, anything about Star Wars makes me happy. And like, even my boyfriend will joke around sometimes and be like, you're always obsessed with Star Wars. And I'm like, because it's my life. Yeah, that's funny. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's an awesome thing. I mean, I would say that I re certainly relate to that. Like I've, it's been ever present since I was a, you know, a kid and it's, it's just always something that's inspired me and, like help push me and like in, in, you know, directions that I needed to, to go in. And um, it's just really great to have that to, you know, for, for any, any, any emotion that you feel for any, um, you know, it's just, it's just always present. And it's always when you see like new um, shows, new, new, and whether it's animated or live action, like it, it's always bringing something new. Yeah. And um, that's one of the things I just love about it. I think for me, like my, so my dad had passed away 10 years ago and it was probably the worst thing that I could have ever experienced as an adult. And, you know, I would watch a lot of the Clone Wars to kind of bring me back to not being in such a depressive state of mind. But, you know, like it's because of Star Wars, why I got through certain things that were really bad that happened in my life. So I think that's why it's meant so much to me because it's not just a show or a movie. It's been something that has helped me through probably the worst things that have ever happened to me. Yeah, that's, that says a lot about Star Wars. I mean, just the power of it and, you know, its ability to affect us all, you know, on such a, on, you know, such a deep level. So I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is awesome. Um, 
Well, cool. I'm stoked that you're here. And I do have links down in the uh, description. So if you want to visit your channel, visit your, your Instagram, please hit the links. They're there. Awesome content. Um, <laughs> and yeah. So we have a range of topics to talk about tonight. Uh, most of them are Star Wars, but not 100% of them. Um, so what we're going to look at, we're going to get right into it with the very first one, and that is SWTBC March Madness. Um, Nilda, are you a collector of the vintage collection? I try. I certain, I only collect like certain characters. So most of them are just like Anakin, Darth Vader, Ahsoka. Um, I have slowly have been picking up some of the droids because I do love droids. But it's like I feel like once I start collecting more droids, I'm probably just going to go crazy about it. But yeah, I have like maybe I want to say like maybe 30, 40 figures. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Um the vintage collection is like my scale of choice. I mean, I, I collect a range of things, too many things, but I love TVC. Um, it's the first like Star Wars line I ever collected. And, you know, to this day, like just the world building aspect of it has been uh, awesome. Um, so uh, what I want to mention here, uh, SWTC March Menace is over. It finished um, and there is a winner. So we're going to talk a little bit about that here. So. Believe it or not, Pong Krell <laughs> from the Clone Wars <laughs> won March Madness. That isn't um, that isn't something I saw coming, um, but that is pretty awesome. Um, I mean, I, I you know, I, I I felt like a lot of us thought it was going to be like Luke Skywalker or you know one of the because there's a big campaign in the TVC community for making the mains like the main yeah. characters that have not been made in 20 years. Like Leia is one of them that's just coming out soon. Um, she's She was one of those, but we still need the original New Hope, Han Solo, Ben Kenobi, Luke Skywalker. We thought one of those were going to win. But Pong Krell took the cake, and I think that's that's not that's cool. Uh, I would love to see Pong Krell as a figure. I don't know how they would do it. He would be pretty big. Um, but, hey, if, if this gets us a step closer to getting a Pong Krell figure, which I never really thought they would make, then... I'm I feel like it. he'd be more like this. Like, yeah, he'd be in that sense, which I, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, the um, uh, it was Pong Krell against Balin Skull. And I think when it got to that last matchup, I think a lot of us thought Balin Skull was going to win, but no, it was Pong Krell. Um, they did make a Dexter Jetster figure back in back in 2002. Um, so I wonder if they, I mean, they probably wouldn't use that figure at, at, after all these years, but, um, at least we have one of this species. So maybe, maybe there's like something they can, some way they can adapt it somehow, but yeah, it'd be, a, it'd be a great figure to add to the collection for sure. So when you were doing this March madness, were you just like putting figures and then just, it was going based off of like a voting scale? Yeah, so this was uh, the guys at SWTVC on Instagram. They put together this every year, March Madness. So basically, it's um, it's kind of it's inspired by the uh, you know NCAA um, college basketball um, you know bracketing system. So yeah. they back in January they solicited um, for you know fans to submit lists, top twenty five lists of their top picks that they want to see in uh, three three quarter inch action figure scale. Um, I submitted a list. A lot of folks submitted a list and they assigned them points based on who was like number one, the number two and so forth. Um, and then by using that information, they created the bracket system. And then every every other day uh, they were putting up, you know, one figure versus another, one figure versus another. And then that's how they kind of narrowed it down. And then the last two standing were Pong Krell and Balin Skull. And um, out of those two, Pong Krell took the wind. Oh, wow. I'm surprised that Balin Skull didn't win, but I can mm. understand. I would rather see a figure like this because I feel like it would be more colorful and it would have like more different poses, especially because he's such a, you know, unique looking character. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, let's see here. Um, so that is, we'll see what happens with that. March Madness has resulted in in other figures being made eventually, um, or at least you know it's it supported Hasbro in in, in doing that. Um, 
So I'm going to move on to this next uh, topic here. This is uh, reveals from WonderCon, where we have some Ghostbusters uh, that are coming. And this is really cool because, you know, I think for a long time, uh, you know, a lot of us thought Ghostbusters was kind of, as, as far as toys go, was kind of done. Like they, they did the recent re uh, retro figures yeah. uh, that are now on Amazon, by the way. I'll just pull up this post. This is from Ghostbusters News on Instagram. Um, and they did that. They they finally are selling them on Amazon. They were on Hasbro Pulse, uh, and I believe they sold out on Pulse. And I got mine at Target a couple months back. But um, you know, now it's all about these uh, these new O ring figures, which are inspired by the '80s GI Joe figures, three and three quarter inch, decent articulation accessories. Um, these look really nice. I um, you know, I these, Ghostbusters honestly were some of the first toys that I had like as a little kid. Um, because that's when the real Ghostbusters was on TV and it was like a big deal. Um, so I had a bunch of those and they're all gone, unfortunately. But um, I love seeing stuff like this when they go back to that original film and they bring back, you know, they try and do them in a new way. I think that's really cool. And that's exactly what we see here with, with these figures. Yeah, you can definitely see that the legs or like the way the shape of the body is, is definitely inspired from the G.I. Joe toys. Yeah. Um, and I like the accessories too. Yeah. I wonder if they'll, since they did these, if they'll do like some of the creatures from the, what is it? The, the dogs from the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really neat. Um, I, I'm stoked. Like, I, I just, the only thing that I, I, I gripe that I have is they haven't announced any ghosts. Like, I want to see Slimer. I want to see the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man at the ba at the bare minimum. We need those two. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if they're going to do them. There hasn't been any, in, in, any indication that they will. Um. But I really am hoping that they do because these are like, for me, these are like must haves. That's totally something else right there that I clicked on. <laughs> it's funny because <laughs> I know that you were a Ghostbuster fan and I was going to mention this to you before we got on, but then I'll just mention it to you now. So, you know, like I do brand ambassadoring for her universe. So they sent us um, a Ghostbuster Slimer cardigan and it's like that bright green and it has like the slime effect on it. And I was going to ask you what size you were because... I normally don't wear like anything Ghostbusters. I've watched the films. I absolutely love them. I love the humor behind it. Any 80s cheesy sci-fi film, I'm 100% all about it. But I was going to ask you if you wanted the Slimer cardigan. That's really sweet of you to offer. <laughs> I'll, I'll show it to you at the end so you can yeah. let me know if you like it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then there's uh, this here, the Ecto-1. That's um pretty. is coming for these figures to to go along with them now this isn't the um this this is a repaint essentially they back in 20 when did ghostbusters afterlife come out that was 2021 they released this uh this version of the ecto-1 but it was painted to match afterlife and now it's painted to match the original film um and what's cool about this is you can put those figures in it because the last one that came out was in that scale it's the same exact vehicle but they didn't make any figures like to fit with it. It was just kind of like its own thing. So I guess if you already have the Ecto one, you can pass on that. Um, just get the figures. But uh, if you don't, or if you want to get this version too, um, here it is. That's nice. I like that photo. <clears throat> yeah, it, it, they did a nice job with it. And, and, you know, I do have the original release and I like it quite a bit. Um, but this one definitely looks, looks more, accurate to the first film because it's just it's nice and clean uh the afterlife one's like all dirty and you know it looks like it's been sitting in the barn for a long time yeah uh, but yeah this is cool and i love how it has like the gurney for the proton packs like that's a really nice touch <laughs> that's pretty cool and it comes with the gurney yeah oh wow yeah that is really cool really cool um and it's weird because pre-orders for these don't launch until June. I don't know why they're waiting so long to do that. Like, well, if you're announcing it now, why wouldn't you put the pre-order now? It's weird. Probably to just get the hype. Yeah. I mean, the movie is is um, out right now, right? So it's probably the best time to do that. Uh, have you seen the movie, by the way? No, we were actually going to go this Sunday to go see it because I 
had to watch the last one to catch up. Nice. Um, I saw it when I was, I was in Texas visiting my family um, a couple of weeks back and I saw it and I, I really liked it. I liked it better than afterlife. Okay. Me personally, but um, for yeah. me, I'm just weird because I love all like my favorite genre of movies to watch is anything from like the seventies and eighties. So when they're, you know, when they make newer films to the older films, I'm always just like very skeptical about watching it, but I'll still go and see it. But I'm still like, Ugh. I was like, I love the originals. Yeah, for sure. You can't you can't beat that original Ghostbusters movie. Like, yeah. there's, there's nothing that touches. It's like a top five movie for me. Um, yeah. So wh who's getting these? Let me know in the, in the comments who's getting them. And I see a couple uh, mentionings of them. Um, very nice. Jason says that a uh, great thing about the 118 scale is any large toy can be a ghost monster for them to fight. That's not, that's, you're not wrong. Like that, that is true. Uh, Jeff says, love these O-rings. I fear I'm going to get hooked on Ghostbusters things once again, especially with the Ecto-1 release. Well, I mean, the, if, if that's the concern, I mean, it, it looks like this is the only thing they're making. It doesn't, they, there's no indication there's anything else like in the pipeline, so to speak. Um, but hopefully if they do well, they'll want to do more later and i hope they do well because yeah um so yeah, i just wanted to really cool. something out really quick um nilda did you notice like my door shake a minute ago did you hear that or see that i was gonna ask you do you live in new york no oh that's creepy was that a ghost well i i it was shaking and i was like looking like this i was like what the heck and you know i thought my husband was was playing like a joke on me yeah. Um, but I texted him and he's not even in the house right now. He's not he went for a walk, so that's so creepy. Um, yeah. Um, and it's on There's video, been... so like we can go we can go back and watch that. But yeah. Yeah. Um, There's um so our dog had passed away like about a month and a half ago, and I have mm -hmm. a ring camera in our house. Um, and literally like a week before he passed, I don't know what provoked me to go on our ring camera and just look. Because sometimes when I'm here at the house by myself, I hear like the oddest noises and I'm just thinking maybe it's just like the blinds or, you know, maybe it's one of my neighbors coming home super late. And I checked the ring camera and literally you saw like little white lights in uh -huh. my living room. It was Orbs. freaky. <laughs> that is very interesting. Very interesting. Um, yeah. So I don't know what that was. That was weird. But um, hey, it's on it's on video. Hopefully there's nobody in my house right now. Uh, how old is your house? How old is it? 1951 it was built. Oh, yeah. There's some history behind there. Yeah, there, there could be. But it's all good. I've lived here a while and nothing's happened like bad, you know, negative. So, yeah, I can coexist with, with a ghost. I don't mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Britt, I hear you here. Give, give us the Janine figure. I mean, yeah, come on. Uh, they didn't release the retro version that they did back in the Kenner days. And... There's no indication of your hair. What is up with that? Come on, Hasbro. I'm, I'm letting you know right now. We need Janine in uh, to be released. Don't be a Mattel. Come on and give us these female figures, please. <laughs> um, yeah, and Jeff agrees. Raina says, Raina Hobbies, I'll pick them up for nostalgic reasons. They just have to look cool sitting in Ecto-1. I'm almost thinking of getting two sets of figures because I want some in the Ecto-1 then I want some outside the Ecto-1. Like, am I crazy? Maybe a little. Yeah, like. Like holding up their their packs like that. Yeah, yeah. And depending, I think it's a four pack of figures, but depending on like if it's a four pack with them on individual like Kenner style cards, like then I might even need a third set because like, you know, you kind of have to have them like with, I mean, if they come that way, I have no idea. But yeah, I'm wacky, I'm saying. So um, let's see, Larry. Yeah, we need Janine and the Firehouse release for the retro line. Absolutely. Like, they, they've done the four main Ghostbusters twice over, right? They did the originals back in 2020. Then they did the uh, the real Ghostbuster anyway, the cartoon. Then they did the uh, Fright features this year. We have a few ghosts. We have the Ecto-1. Um, and they even did a couple of role play things, right? They did the, like the Ghost Popper. They did that. Um, but we need uh, we need Janine and we need the Firehouse. And then I think we'd be pretty set, honestly, unless they wanted to do more ghosts. I would always be okay with that. Yeah, I definitely would like to see the firehouse. That'd be pretty cool. 
Yeah. I never had the, the, the Kenner firehouse. Like I had a bunch of the ghost buzzers. I never had the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from the Kenner line. And I never had the firehouse for whatever reason. I just never got the, got those two. Um, I bought the Stay Puft as an adult. Uh, I got one on eBay, like a one from like 1984 um, or 85, but um, yeah, it's like, it's older than me, but it's, it's really cool to have it. Um, I feel like if Hot Toys made like a life size version of it, but like, probably like about this big, I'd probably buy it. Like a Stay Puft one, just to hug it and walk with it everywhere. You know, you know, it's funny you say that because I saw one, it's not Hot Toys, but um, this same account right here, Ghostbusters News. This one is from um, Star Ace, Star Ace Toys. It's a 12 inch Stay Puft. Oh, wow. And it sells for about 190, I believe. Probably the closest we'll get. Uh, at this point probably it's so cute i love it it's like cute and cuddly but it'll kill you i know it's awesome um you know i mattel did do one when, when mattel had the ghostbusters license they made like a really it was a san diego comic-con exclusive and i think he was like 18 inches tall or something he was huge and oh, wow. i got one but unfortunately that figure was known for whatever reason to discolor after you took it out of the box and of course, with a, a toy like that, I had to have it out of the box because it had like a real feel skin. So it felt like a real marshmallow, which was awesome. Um, but it, it it got yellow like over time. So I ended up selling it and, you know, really, really a huge bummer because it was an awesome like like piece. That I just, like, you know. So, what yeah. was the material? It was like a, I don't even know, like maybe like a plasticized foam or something. It was like really okay. soft and kind of squishy. Uh, that it felt sucks great. That it wasn't, yeah, it sucks like it wasn't like acrylic base or anything because with that you can kind of like there's different types of either paints or like a like not a acetones that you can use to kind of like make it go back to being white, but then you don't want to ruin it by using acetone. Yeah, I mean, I was even thinking like a magic eraser maybe, but I didn't want to yeah. make it worse. And then um, it, it could have very well been like the paint that they used like didn't react well with the material, but. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Um, Adam, this is a good point. You need to use that HasLab um, so you can catch your paranormal roommates. Yeah, I have the Proton Pack, and I have the Neutrono Wand, and I have the Trap and the PKE Meter coming later this year when those are released. Maybe that's all I need, and I can do a little bit of ghost hunting and just walk, walk into, um, <laughs> well, I could do that here at home, I guess, and I probably will, <laughs> but um uh, I guess you could just like kind of put your stuff, your gear on and go somewhere like, and you know, I'm like, oh, I've heard there's a ghost here. I'm here to look for ghosts. <laughs> yeah. We got to get you the, the, what is it? The uniform. Yeah. I need the jumpsuit. I had one when I was a kid. I think my mom still has it. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are cool. I'm excited for those. Um, bring them on. And, and yeah, I, again, I really enjoyed the, uh, the movie. Um, let's see. What do we have next? We have, we're going to go into some Hot Toys because there have been a couple since we've been off. The first one is the Hot Toys Artisan Jack Sparrow, which came out of left field because it's like, what? Like they came out with this, here it is right here, Jack Sparrow Artisan version. And they, it was just like out of nowhere. And then it went for pre-order like a day later or something. And, and I was I, I didn't even know when for pre-order. I, I was like looking at my phone later that night. I'm like, why did we for pre-order this morning? And I missed it. I missed the artisan version. <sighs> I was really bummed out, but it's okay because it doesn't look like it's too far off from the uh the regular versions. Yeah. I woke up like one morning for work and I saw that Leal had posted, and so did brother uh what is it, brother cousins? Yeah, and I was like, What? I was like, why are they dropping a Jack Sparrow now? <laughs> It was just the most random drop because everything that we were getting for Hot Toys was like Star Wars, Spider-Man, Iron Man. Um, I forgot it was like two other like uh, horror figures. And the next thing you know, it's like, boom, Jack Sparrow. And I'm like, where did this come from? Yeah, it, it came out of nowhere for sure. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it's what I like, though, is that they're offering three versions of it. Like this is the artisan version, I guess. You know, it's weird the way it says it will hair implantation. That sounds like something that, like you get when you're like 60 years old and you don't have hair anymore or something. I don't know. But 
Um, that's what he has here. Uh, and it's like, I guess it's wool hair, right? I mean, I, other than that, I can't really tell what's different. I think the scarf is, 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 um, cloth instead of plastic. Um, other than that, that it's not really like a wide margin between the artisan or the other versions. Like this is the artisan here. It's got a nice base, but if you get the deluxe version right here, you get the same exact base. You just don't get the wool hair. It still has soft hair. Look how good this looks. This looks. That face looks, sculpt is phenomenal. It's awesome. I have the um the one they the last one they did. I think it was the the DX like fifteen or sixteen that they did for this film, um, Dead Man Tell No Tales. But it was it's it's a, it's an awesome figure. But um this one might edge it out a little bit, so I might I might sell the other one. But um it comes with all the same stuff that the artisan does. It just doesn't have the wool hair. I guess is the difference. Okay. But um and it doesn't have the cloth bandana. But um. Basically the same thing. It's not like the Joker. The Joker was had different face paint and everything. And I love the uh, the amount of accessories that this comes with. Yeah, especially the deluxe. You get this base um, that has like the water and it has like a treasure chest and it has um, the ship wheel that's on top of like a rock um, kind of thing. It's it's pretty cool. Um, and you contrast that with the uh, collector edition, which is just the regular version. It's still the same figure as the deluxe. Um, the only really difference, you don't get the treasure chest and you don't get the water effects and the rock uh, or the treasure chest for um, the regular edition, but you still get the really sweet uh, ship wheel, which I may just get the regular edition because I don't know that I, I don't even think the other one would fit in my detoff anyway. So <laughs> I'd probably just go this route, but yeah, it's nice to have options for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I love the ship wheel. It's pretty cool. Uh, Mary, if you're still with us, I'm curious if you're going to be getting Jack Sparrow. Um, but yeah, the likeness is is awesome. Uh, and I love how it has the two faces. Like that's something I wish they would do more often is 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 give us more display options with some of this stuff. And, you know, the two options, the rolling eyeballs, like that's solid. Like I'm really excited for this one. The rolling eyeballs for it, quite some time. It, it took me a while to get used to because it was like really creepy because you're sitting there trying to move the eyes and you're like, please don't stare at me. I, it's, you're just a toy. <laughs> like, don't look at me. Yeah, I did that with. Um, uh, I think the first one I got with rolling eyeballs is the Batman Returns one. And, and like I was like doing it for the first time. And and I made like I did something where the eyes like were like cross eyed, like looking at his nose. And it was just so bizarre. Yeah. I think mine first figure was the Moff Gideon and I was moving his eyes and I kind of made his eyes look like he was upset. And, you know, I always think of Moff Gideon as not Moff Gideon. I think of Giancarlo Esposito as Gus from Breaking Bad. So when he's staring at me, I'm like, oh, my God, please don't kill me. I'm just trying to pose you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And Mary, I see you got the artisan. Very nice. Very nice. That's awesome that you're able to snag it. Um, congrats. Very cool. Uh, I am on the wait list. So if, you know, if, if that opens up, then, you know, I may, I may spring for that. If not, you know, I'm fine, which is probably the collector edition, but we'll see what happens. Um, so there was another um, Hot Toys dropped just yesterday, right? And this was a really uh, exciting one. It went up for pre-order today and I got on that like ASAP. But now we have the Hot Toys Ahsoka, Anakin Skywalker from the Clone Wars. Um, and this is one I think we all saw this coming. Once they did Ahsoka, once they did Captain Rex, I think we all knew they were going to um they were going to do the uh the Anakin as well. And it's so fresh that I don't even have it up here on my uh on my tab. So I'm gonna have to pull that up. Uh, because I already had all the tabs like ready to go before. Um but yeah, I saw this go up for pre-order today. I think it was around like 12 p.m. like Pacific. And uh, I was like, yep, pre-order, like day one for sure. Uh, but yeah, here he is right here. He is looking quite good. I'm still on the fence about pre-ordering this because I already have the other Anakin Clone Wars version with the longer hair. And I got him with the, I did the deluxe version or yeah, it was the deluxe version with the staff. So I don't know, like in my mind, I do want to buy this one, but it's like, I, I like the other one better. I don't know why they made, 
Some of the facial reactions here, I wish we would have gotten a little bit more of different face sculpts for this one because, you know, this Anakin, when I saw him on Ahsoka, he looked very fierce and, you know, like that whole conversation scene with him and Ahsoka and he's doing the transitionals from Anakin to Vader. I mm -hmm. kind of wish like the more angrier looks he had, I wish they would have added on to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been cool. I do have the original release too, but like when it comes to Anakin, like I I don't even question it. Like I'm gonna order it. Like there's just no way I'm not. I know. Um, but yeah, I I think like when I was looking at at uh, at the video earlier. Somebody posted a video on somewhere, and like when he's like walking around as the hologram, like it kind of seems like they base this figure like on that because like the facial expressions look like very much yeah. like he's like doing that that a uh, you know hologram, but. Um, yeah, I think he looks really nice. Um, it's, it's definitely a different route for them to take as far as his face. Cause usually, usually hot toys does like, you know, the very like kind of almost like, like straight ahead, like dead stare, like serious expression, which, you know, people aren't usually like that. You know, usually there's, we have some expression, right? We're not, we're not usually just like neutral, like you know, like we're usually yeah. expressive in some way. So it's kind of cool that they're doing that. Like I, I, I dig them doing something different. Like, you know, I have the other Anakin's that I have are, are serious. Like I'll, I'll take the one that's a little bit less serious. Yeah. I'm still on the fence. Like I said, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to think about it over the weekend and make my final decision on Sunday before ordering it. Cause I am an Anakin girl too. So, you know, anything for him, but I'm just, I'm like, do I really want to have two of the same body figure? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see like how, how the final, final version is, but they also added um, these effects that that's going to come with to put on the lightsaber, which is different. They've never done this before. Yeah. Um, so I'll be interested to see. I, I never, I don't know about you, but I never use like on the lightsabers. I never use the electronics because you can barely see them know. anyway. No. I've never used them. I literally have a drawer in, well, what was my toy room, but I have it now boxed up. Um, I had a drawer just filled with batteries for the lightsabers, for all the electronic stuff. I think the only hot toy of mine that I ever put a battery in to actually look at it because it was my first hot toy was when I picked up... Um, Commander Cody because I wanted to see the holographic version of Palpatine. And I just, you know, in my mind, I'm in my room and I just wanted to be like order 66 and then just have, you know, Captain <laughs> Commander Cody be like, yes, my, you know, yes, my master <laughs> or whatever he says again. Yes. But it's just, you know, I've never, like, I, like, I agree with you. I have never used any of the electronic versions for these. Yeah, yeah, there and there are some aftermarket like lightsabers I've seen people do, and they have like a plug, and you plug it into like a little box. Yeah, and stuff, but there's I, this guy that I follow on Instagram. His name is uh, I think it's like Chris Custom Sabers, and he does uh, these amazing light up sabers that you have to plug them in. But I've seen him pose them with hot toys, and they look amazing. But I just don't have the time of not. It's not the time. It's just I don't. I don't want to pose them with the lights. I, you know, I love it. I think maybe this effect will be cool. And I don't know if maybe like the way that they have it seem like maybe it makes noise from what it looks like. I think if like you tap it, it'll do that effect. But I, I just can't plug them in for myself. Yeah. Yeah. I might experiment with that one day, but you know, for now I'm, I'm fine just having them holding the sabers just with yeah. lights, lights off. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm digging this. Like, I feel like it just, I don't know. It, it, it's cool. It's, it's really cool. I'm, um, yeah. And I had quite a few sideshow rewards. It was like, you know, I just applied it towards my total. I'm like, okay, I'm going to save, you know, 50, whatever bucks it was. And I'm like, yeah, can't miss Anakin in any shape or form. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was but upset when they re-released the, um, what was it? The, I think it was like the revenge of the Sith Anakin, but he had the cloth hair. The artisan. Yeah. I got that. I did pre-order yeah. that one. When I tell you, if I took a picture of you, it took a picture of my whole setup in my office. I, I literally took a computer from the other side of my work 
to add a third monitor <laughs> at my computer, like my whole office. I had three computers going. I had to teach my boyfriend how to log on to Hot Toy, like to log on to Sideshow and was teaching him like, listen, just do it. And he's like, what happens if you get four? I don't care. I'll sell them. Just try to get one. <laughs> and I'm still on the wait list for it. Like I've gotten emails uh -huh. going like, are you still interested for this? And I'm like, yes, please. I just, this is the last Anakin that I want. Yeah, that one was tough. Like I. So tough. I was in the waiting room and it said like, you will be in the waiting room. And I think it said like one minute. It said one minute because I took a screenshot of it. And then when it refreshed, it said this, this item is, is pre-sold out. And I'm like, are you serious? So I hit the wait list, of course. And I think like a month later, I got a conversion. Like, so I, I the wait list converted. So I was able to pre-order it. So hopefully the same happens for you. Yeah, I'm hoping. Or hopefully somebody hears me <clears throat> on this channel and is like, Hey, I'll give you a deal. Cause I, I message always all, all the time on like any of the side show, like any of the hot toy Facebook group pages. I'm like, if anyone is selling one, please let me know. I'm like, I will buy one, but I just don't want to, you know, pay a, a down payment for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I see your question, Mary, about, I guess I answered it already, but yes, that Anakin converted. Um, like I, I would have a hundred percent. I still, I would have paid like aftermarket prices for, for the artisan. And again, I wouldn't have missed it. Yeah. And I did the same for, for the wonder woman that they did. Like it was like, it wasn't an artisan per se, but it, it for all intents and purposes, it kind of is. Um, I did, I did, I wasn't able to get that one. So I, I did pay aftermarket prices for it. And then I went to uh, Japan last year and they had it there in stock at, at a uh, toy sapiens in Tokyo for regular price. And then with the exchange rate, it would have actually been less than I would have paid for it, like, had I gotten through on Sideshow. So I was like, yeah. man, I should have just waited. But then I'm thinking, like, well, then I have to take it on the plane and this and that. And, you know, wouldn't it have been easy? So, um, And that's one of my things that I've, I've been doing. Like, I've purposely not been trying to buy so many hot toys because of the fact that I'm going to Japan for Star Wars Celebration next year. And it's like I already said I'm taking one empty luggage bag with me. And I plan on trying to buy either some old school video game systems or I'm definitely going to try to stop by the sideshow stores and try to buy as much hot toys as I possibly can. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm really excited for you going. Um, yeah, it's, it's I, been my dream come true to go to Japan. It, yeah, I, I I could go back there anytime. Like, um, I mean, I just love it there. Like, I, I, I just feel so I at actually, peace. I actually watched your video yesterday, um, like where you were talking about, like it was your second time coming in there and like how you were showing around. So I literally was like taking notes of like what to check out because I plan on going for like 16 days. So I want to mm -hmm. do like a couple days, you know, like doing Star Wars celebration. But then afterwards, I really would like to, you know, venture out into the wilderness in Japan and just for sure. enjoy it for what it is. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's it, it it's such a profound like experience. Like you'll never forget it. Honestly, it's it's yeah. I I think about it a lot. <laughs> but yeah, definitely hit up Toy Sapiens because that's the the place. It's it's actually owned by by Hot Toys, and okay. they have other things there too. They sell Hasbro stuff. They sell um you know stuff from NECA. They have other companies and stuff, but but th that is the place to go for Hot Toys in in Tokyo, and it's it's an awesome store. It really, really is. Okay. I'll make sure to save it on my little list that I have on my phone. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I could keep talking about this Anakin, but then we'd be here all night. Um, <laughs> so I'll go ahead and stop. Uh, we'll let him go for, for now. Um, yeah. We're going to go into Hasbro Star Wars. Hasbro Star Wars. All right. So Imperial March uh, was going on last month. We talked about it uh, on the last show, but then it continued when we were off the air. Um, so off the air, like I'm some like syndicated show or something. Um, so basically, uh, what they announced is, uh, this right here. So these are the, the, uh, March live stream, uh, for Imperial March uh, items that were announced. This is from my friends at banthaskull.com, their website says they, they kindly put everything so nice and neatly into, uh, you know, post, uh, anytime there are new, uh, official reveals. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there are some black series. There is some uh, TVC. I guess we'll start off with black series. We'll just touch on them really quick. Um, and this goes to the Acolyte, which, you know, we'll talk a little bit about the Acolyte in just a little bit uh, after we get through the, the, the toys. But um, yeah, so I guess they are, they're not waiting. Uh, they're, they're making some figures from this show uh, for black series. Um, Nilda, do you, do you do anything with black series at all? Um, so bef like about two years ago, I literally, and I had about, I'm not even exaggerating. I am pretty sure this number was correct. I had like over 275 black series. Yeah. They were all still sitting in boxes and you know, like I went through a bad breakup and I just went through a extreme like eat, pray, love purge. And, you know, I got rid of a whole bunch of toys that just like brought old memories. And like most of them were my black series toys, but I kept the ones that I had signed by some of the celebrities. So once in a while, I do get like the pop up news for black series. And I'm just like, oh, I want that one. So I'm, I've been very specific on which characters I picked, but some of them I look at them sometimes and I'm like, maybe I can go back a little bit. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you know, all these different lines, right? Like, I know there's just too much, but yeah, I mean, I, I, at one point was buying every single black series. Like I think, you know, the VC channel was one of the first, at least to, um, to review them when they first came out back in 2013. Um, but it was just one of those, it was like a fresh, like novelty, like it was clean slate. They could do anything they want and it would be brand new, right? Cause they'd never done it in that scale before. But then like, like after like around the force awakens, they start making all these figures and like, then, you know, the last Jedi and, and it just got so big. And, you know, today I still buy a few, but I kind of pick and choose like the new Padme, the new um, Anakin from episode one, like I'll get those, but like I, for a lot of the newer content, I kind of skip on um, most of the time for black series. Um, but this is Jedi master soul. Uh, from the acolyte, so that's basically what we're. They've announced is 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 a number of Jedi. Uh, this is a uh, Jedi Master. I'm bringing. It, I have to tilt my head. Jedi Master in Dara. Um, looks like a cool figure, but you know, not anything that I have on my uh, wish list uh, at this time. Yeah. Um, and then Jedi Knight. Why did they have to put it sideways? Now I got to tilt my head every time. Jedi Knight Yord Fandar. I'm, now that I'm right. tilting my head. <laughs> I'm gonna be like this by the end of the show. Yeah. Um, Yord Fandar, interesting names. I always wonder when they make Star Wars names, like how do they do it? Do they sit like in, in like a, a group together and just put letters together to see what works? Like do they <laughs> do, they try to sound out like different things and try and just see do something that sounds cool? Like I don't know. It's I've cool. always I've always made this joke with family members saying that I feel like they have a Scrabble board in the middle of the boardroom <laughs> and they're just like, all right, we're gonna throw some letters and whatever lands is the name. They could be, it could be, yeah, it could be like Wheel of Fortune too. They're like, oh, yeah, give yeah. me a vowel, uh, you know, just, you know, what, what sounds, you know, now that'll work. Yord Fandar, sure, let's run with it. Sure. <laughs> that sounds like a name to me. <laughs> sounds Star Warsy enough. Um, yeah, and then the last one here for Black Series is my, uh, she's Assassin. So, yeah, I don't know if she's, like, dark side or if she's just, just an assassin. Like, we don't really know. Um, but she comes with a bunch of knives. So she likes knives. So we know something about her. Yeah, I think she is the protagonist in the show. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that is, uh, that's Black Series right there. This could be the... True, Adam. Uh, they could generate chat GPT and maybe that's how they do the names. I don't know. Could be. That's kind of funny. Uh, so let's go over to the big, the role play one. Um, that is the Moth Gideon helmet as a dark trooper. Uh, this is tempting. I got to say this. This one's tempting. Oh, no. This is a I'm getting this. <laughs> it's yeah, so it's, cool. It is. Um like the, I do have some of the helmets, but I don't, I don't buy all of them. I kind of try and like focus like, cause you know, like I was saying, there's so many things. Yeah. But like, yeah, I'm, I got my eye on this. 
Yeah, no, I definitely want this for sure. I, I collect helmets, but it, like, like you, I'm very picky on who I collect. And this just reminds me so much of like the episode of Siege of Mandalore. So it's just like all these Mandalorians just rolling through. And I just absolutely love this helmet. I just hope that like the front visor isn't like cheap mm -hmm. and like very plasticky, if that's even a word for me to use. But yeah, I, I'm hoping that, you know, like it's a nice red visor and, you know, you can't see the eyes or maybe like when you hit the sunlight, it actually like covers your face or something. But from what the picture looks like, I think it looks great. Yeah, it does. It looks really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't wait to see this and then I can put it, put it, if I once again, I can just put it on and just like, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe grab my dark saber, maybe, um, go and terrorize my neighbors. I don't know yet. I haven't thought about it that far, but I know my neighbor saw me the other day, uh, with the dark saber because it was, I just, I changed the battery out and I went outside and my neighbor's just staring at me. And I was like, it's not a weapon. It's just a toy. I'm like, I'm go going back inside my house. <laughs> oh my God. I've been like trying to practice on how to like wield a lightsaber and like learning how to do spins. So I brought like six lightsabers outside with me. My neighbors are staring at me and I'm like, don't stare at me. I'm like, I'm just trying to learn how to spin. A yeah, <laughs> that's funny. They tend to do that. Though. I've done the same thing. I go out to my backyard and just like start swinging it around. And yeah. And then I went to, I remember like the guy behind us neighbor, uh, backyard neighbor, like he, he, he like got a ladder. He looked over the fence and, and I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, everything okay? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> of course everything's okay. I'm just swinging my lightsaber. Yeah. Especially for me, what was more embarrassing was like, so for Megacon, I went dressed up as Bo-Katan and it was a cosplay that I had been saving up for, you know, like for months for, and I took my precious time in building that and like walking out of my apartment dressed up like that. My neighbors were staring at me and I had one neighbor say to me in Spanish, they were like, are you going to war? And I was like, yes, I'm going to war <laughs> with you. Um, yeah, just go up to them, you know, dark saber helmet. You have something I want <laughs> and leave it at that. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is this is neat. This is neat. I haven't pre-ordered yet, but um, probably will. There's it with the, the visor light on. Yeah, see, that's that's the thing. And, you know, um, where is it? Jeff Russell said the same thing. It looks too plastic and it kind of looks like it's 3D printed. So I'm just hoping that, you know, this is just a picture that we're getting. And when we actually get the actual item, it, it's not going to feel like it's cheap. Yeah, this could be like a render. Um, yeah. Hopefully the final one does have like a metallic -y. They, d I think it will be because like the Mandalorian helmet looks like it looks like metal. They did a really nice job with it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as long as they implement that here, I think it'll, it'll be fine. Yeah. If, if they do it the same concept style, how they did the man Mando helmet, then I'd be very happy with that. Cause I own that one too. And I thought it was great. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess I skipped one. Padawan, Jack, Jackie Lon. Yeah. Um, all right. So TVC, what did they, what did they show us for TVC? They didn't, yeah, they did do a couple for Akali. So here's a May or, or my again. Um, it's a pretty nice card. I like the art that they went with mm -hmm. for that. Um, and then there is also again, Jedi master soul, uh, because of his lightsaber and a hilt. I love that. I love when they give us the hilts because, you know, you kind of got to have that for, for display options. Yeah. Um, and so we, we knew these two were coming. Here's R2-D2. So this is a, uh, it's not really a re-release, but it is a, it's kind of like a spin on a previously released here because they came out with this, but he had a dirtied up paint scheme. This one is okay. just clean. So um, I think it, I don't know if it has the same TVC number. Maybe if one of you guys knows, you can let me know in the chat if it has the same BC number. But that's really the only difference is the figure is like cleaned up. Uh, and then this one is, this is the the one that it's all about right here. We've been waiting for Leia for 20 years. Uh, the last one that had decent articulation was in 2004. Um, I can't believe it's taken that long for them to do this. But here she is in all of her glory, Princess Leia Organa, and her uh, classic white 
a new hope gown. So this is this is this is the one right here. Yeah, that's really pretty. I will say this, one of my favorite things about the TVC the TVC figures is that I always love the card backs. They're beautiful. And I feel like for me if I got into collecting them again, I would be buying two. I would buy one to display and then one to keep for the card back and just be able to like hang them up on my walls. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I was doing with Black Series. Like I was buying two of each because yeah. I loved, I had a bookcase and I was sliding them into my bookcase like they were books. And I had them all in numeric order or I had them all by like, you know, which movie, this. And when they had the numbers, like the red boxes, I had those. But then I started buying two of them because I would take the other figures out and display them inside my detops. But then eventually it just became way too much. Yeah. But I do like this Leia. I might pick that up. Yeah. Yeah. She's she looks really cool. Um, yeah. I like how they have the hood as an option. Like it's in oh, a wow. it's a different piece you can put on there or not. Um, so that's really great. Like the wrists look like they're on they they look like ball jointed wrists from what I can tell, which is kind of nice. Um yeah. Oh, so, I love that pose. Yeah, the blaster, like that yes. looks great. Um Without the hood, she just has like the other attachment where it's like the hood is down. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm what I, what I want to see is what the final figure looks like because I mean just based on this, she looks awesome. She really really does. But I kind of feel like she needs a little bit more lipstick and a little more blush. So I'm, I'm curious to see if the final figure has any adjustments in that area. Yeah, I agree. She needs a little bit of lipstick and blush. Yeah, just a, just a little bit. Um, yeah, the silhouette on this one's great though. Like they really they really got the proportions like mm -hmm. really nicely done. Uh, I know there are some people complaining that she is plastic instead of like having like a soft cloth skirt. Um, oh, wow. And I can kind of see that. I mean, she it might limit articulation a little bit, but you know maybe if she does well, they'll 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 offer it in a they'll reissue it with a different sort of um, dress or something. Cause the, the black series one has, uh, has the soft goods. Mm -hmm. dress. Um, Larry says she does need some more paint apps on the face. Mechanize says lay invader on your numbers. Okay. Thank you for confirming that. Um, is R2 a new number? That's the one I am wondering about. I don't know if anybody's answered that. Just seeing her in that pose, like it really makes me want to just buy that figure. I mean, you should. <laughs> I know. <laughs> when I do, I'm going to blame you. Please do. Everybody does that anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Pico B1 says, I honestly think they did this to get mint on car people, proper collectible. Could be. That's what they were saying on Bantha School. That maybe that's why they, but you know, I don't know. I think I like to think that they tend to go for what looks the best, but um, I don't know. There's any number of reasons that they make the choices that they do. Beck and I says that R2 is not on Steve's list. Okay. Good to know. So maybe it, um, we don't know yet what, what the number situation is there. Yeah, mech, vac metal would be very nice for R2, for sure. All right. So those are the uh, Imperial March reveals. And those are all great. Um, now we're going to touch on the WonderCon Star Wars reveals, uh, of which there were a few for both Black Series and Vintage Collection. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at those. All right. So again, from banthaskull.com, because they always post the goods here. Uh, let's focus first on Black Series. So this was a smaller, like, announcement as far as, like, the amount of products go. But Hammerhead, Moma Nate on himself, coming to Black Series, uh, which is cool. Which is cool. So he comes with some glass, some cups and glasses and a blaster. And this is this has always been like my favorite Cantina Alien from Star Wars. So even though he is Black Series, I'm, I'm probably going to have to pick him up. 
That's really cool. Yeah, he's 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 great. Um, yeah, they did it. They 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 really nailed the sculpt. They really oh, yeah. did. I love the details on the side. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was always interesting how like I think like his mouse are he has two mouse, but they're on the sides of his head, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, he looks really good. He looks really nice. Uh, you know, just the outfit and everything. Um, the glassware, like that's a nice touch. Um, I mean, I'm trying to look for something to nitpick, and I'm having a hard time. Uh, if anything, maybe I would say the eyes, maybe if they glowed just a little bit more. Yeah, would probably, probably be kind of cool. Um, but beyond that, I mean, this looks really solid. Yeah, they did an amazing job with the paint. Yeah, they truly did. Um, yeah, I, uh, I like it. I'm going to get it. And I see people <laughs> wanted, I know people want it in TVC. I see the comments. I know it needs to be in TVC. It, it absolutely does. It will be. Don't worry. It's coming. I know it is in my heart. Not officially. I know. I know it's coming though. Um, we will get hammerhead eventually. I'm not worried about that at all. Adam, I like this. Uh, I wish they would do a black series roar on Korob. That would be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they could, they did one in the three and three quarter inch scale, like back in 2007, 2008. So why not? Why not? Um, so that was the only black series. So these others are uh, fan channel releases like Hammerhead. Hammerhead's also a fan, fan channel, which is um, Hasbro Pulse, Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, and sometimes Amazon, just depending. Um, so for TVC, there's the Deluxe Zeb. Uh, of course, if you, if you backed the ghost... You're going to get Zeb already, but he's going to be based on his season three appearance. This one is season one. Um, this is $24.99. It is for pre-order. If, if, if you're interested in getting, you know, these Rebels figures, they're not going to be in stores. These are these are fan channel figures. So you have to, if you didn't back the ghosts and you want these, this is the only way to get these. So again, that's the fan channel, Entertainment Earth, Hasbro Pulse, Big Bad Toy Store, uh, and Amazon.com. Uh, I don't think Amazon has Zeb, though. But uh, they have the others that we'll talk about in just a minute. Yeah, I mean, Zeb borrows from the ghost version of the figure. So, I mean, it it's already a very solid-looking figure. Just look at that staff. It looks awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, he's going to look great on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, let's see. Vintage Collection also has Ezra Bridger coming. This is based on his, um, uh, this is the Hero Lethal version. This is based on the, the, the hologram we see in Ahsoka, um, which is funny because, I mean, if it's if it's truly based on his hologram version in Ahsoka, the figure should be a hologram, but it's not. So it's a figure. Yeah. But I, I understand. I wouldn't want a hologram figure anyway. Um, but yeah, he looks great as well. I'm agreeing with uh, what Tariq wrote. He says, I'm starting to regret backing the ghost. I don't have a uh, surface that can fit besides the centerpiece tables. Yeah. What's um, what's great about the ghost, though, is they've shown that you can display it on a shelf, like dis like only partially assembled. Like if you if you want to. And I do this with some with the ghost or, or the uh, the Razor Crest. I did it. I don't have one of the engines on there because then it wouldn't fit on my shelf. The yeah. ghost is going to be the same way. You can take off like one third of the ship and then just display like the center and then one of the wings. So yeah. it's nice to at least have that option. It's still going to be huge, obviously, but it is nice to have those display options. It was a very tough decision for me to sit there and just not back up the ghost. I was, I had it sitting in my checkout and the whole entire time I'm like, Yes, no, yes, no. And I kept thinking about space and, you know, at the time we were moving. So I needed to think more about like, where can I fit this? So eventually, you know, I have friends, you know, like in the community that bought more than one. So I know if I change my mind, I can just be like, hey, 
I changed my mind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's and you know the, these Haslabs are are tough too because they give you like a limited amount of time, and then they charge you, and then you don't get it for a long time. Yeah. Um, this picture is actually kind of funny. It almost looks like he's like dancing or something, like doing ballet or something. <laughs> um, like he's about to break down. Yeah. He looks very proud in this photo. <laughs> I'm Ezra. I'm a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lightsaber. Um, and then uh, Kanan Jarrus was the other one. So mm -hmm. this one's based on the season one look, unlike the version that comes with um, uh, the ghost. Um, yeah, I, again, un, like the regular lightsaber, the unignited lightsaber and his blaster the figure looks awesome. Like I, the card looks cool. They're using the rebels animation yeah. there, but the figure oh, looks that's, great. That's a sick pose. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, again, don't miss out on these because once these are. These are gone. Like, I don't think they're going to reach. I mean, I could be wrong. They might reissue them again someday. But um, the fact that their fan channel doesn't really. It doesn't suggest to me that there's going to be another release of them anytime soon, at least. So don't miss out on these guys. Oh, wow. Yeah, very posable. Yeah, he looks very posable. Yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on these. Get them set up on the shelf. That is going to be fun. Yeah, that's cool. Great photography. Mm -hmm. Yes. So those are uh, those are up for pre-order now. You can pre-order them. Um, if you go, if you want it, if anybody wants to order them on Entertainment Earth. Enter the promo code Victoria, and I think you'll get uh, you'll get ten percent off of anything in in stock items. Um, but yeah, no, they look great, and I'm um, you know those are the WonderCon um, items right there. So that is going going to wrap up our TVC um, Hasbro. I guess we're talking Black Series too uh, discussion because that's all that's been revealed since the last stream. So you know, a few nice things, and more is coming. The HasLab, let's talk about the HasLab, all right? The HasLab, the new HasLab is coming. We know now. Uh, it is going to be a, uh, formally announced um, on May the 4th. It's coming on May the 4th. I Brand new Star that. Wars, the Vintage Collection HasLab. What do you guys think it is? Let me know in the comments. I want to know what you think it is. Nilda, I want to know what you think it is. What is the new HasLab? I don't know. I feel like maybe it could possibly be something because of the fact that the Phantom Menace is going to be hitting its 25-year anniversary. But I don't know. It's Ugh. Maybe it's going to be another ship. Maybe. Or Maz, yeah, it reveals uh, Maz Eisley's cantina. I don't know. If you know, you need to tell me. <laughs> sell your uh, sell your kidneys now, people. Um, Was it the cantina? Because everybody's commenting that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It could be the Death Star. It could be. Oh. If it's the Death Star, I will scream so loud. Like, I can't show you my arm, but, like, <laughs> I have it tattooed right there. I see it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, it could be the Canto Bite Sail Barge. Ooh. It could be the um, Queen Amidala's Royal Starship. It could be all of the pod racers, all of them from the Phantom Menace. It could be um, a pergil. Imagine that. It could be like a single space whale, like huge. Like that big? Yeah. I will be, if that's it, I would literally get like fishing wire and buy like two to have them dangling in my roof <laughs> to make it seem like, from my ceiling to make it seem like they're hanging around. I would sleep with it at night probably. <laughs> 
<laughs> like hold it. Yeah. Take me to another galaxy. <laughs> Um, oh, dude, if it's the Death Star, I'm replacing my ceiling fan with it and putting it in the middle of the <laughs> room and putting lights surrounding it. Nice. Nice. It could be um, Echo Base playset. It could be the... Um, it could be the uh, the Outlander Club from Attack of the Clones. Uh, it could be... Um, what else could it be? It could be. Um, I wish we had like a star Mona. destroyer. Yeah, that too. It could be. It could be the star destroyer. Yeah, absolutely, with the bridge, with 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 Vader and everything. Um, it could be. Um, what did I say? The resistance bomber. That was a really. I love the resistance bomber. I would I would like that? But I know, like you know, they're not going to make that. Um, yeah. It could be. Um, a playset based on um, Pasana, you know, the big fe like festival with all the aliens could be mm -hmm. that. It could. Okay, I'm not gonna stop. Oh, and you know what it is? Okay, I'll tell you guys what it is. It's 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 the uh, the, the the prison from Andor. <laughs> one one way out. One way out. Should I buy a jumpsuit and like run around my house screaming that? Yes, on program. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll be late. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it could be anything. It could be anything. But y y you know, whatever it is. Very See, with last time. year's, with last year's Haslab, because they were, I feel like they revealed so much. So, like when they were doing all the little guesses, immediately, I think it was like after the second uh, guess that they threw out there, I was like, this is definitely the ghost ship. It has to be. And I remember being in group pages, like with friends, just like joking around and everybody kept commenting it. I feel like this year they'll probably be like more discreet about it and not give so much of a hint. So then everybody gets it correctly. Yeah. It could be the Gungan submarine, like, a, like six of them in one box. It could be a full size Jar Jar Binks. It, it could be with a, with a, a sticking his tongue out action. I'd buy like five of them. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's there's a lot of um, ideas here in the comments. I mean, I certainly see people saying it's it's the cantina. Um, yeah, I see your comments here. You guys think it's the cantina? Maybe. Maybe not. 29 days, you're right. Death Star for 2027? Maybe. Maybe. We just don't know. <laughs> Home <laughs> one star. Yeah. 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 Adam Kennedy wrote, I think it's Aunt Baru's kitchen set. <laughs> <laughs> Does it come with two burnt figures on the side? Oh, man. That's so um, Yeah, those. Um... Oh, a sand crawler. Yeah, I mean, it could be a thing. It could be Imperial Shuttle. It could be. Uh, it it could be anything. It could be anything. Um, maybe it's it's the 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 Grand Inquisitor's lightsaber. I don't know. Oh no, it's the Vintage Ooh, Collection, right? So good. it's not that. It's definitely not that. Um, I don't want to speculate anymore. It, the The point is, the Hazlab is coming. It's coming soon, and. Be excited. Oh I'm boy. excited. I'm very excited. I'm very, 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 very excited. Um, anyway. Yeah, so that's coming. Stay tuned. Oh, I do want to announce here that um, I will be doing a May the 4th live stream um, specifically to react to, to the announcement of the HasLab. So uh, I'll announce who's going to be uh, on that very next week um but that is coming it'll be on saturday may the 4th i'll announce the time as we get closer it won't be at the night time it won't be the cantina um uh, so shower it'll be the cantina coffee hour it'll be earlier in the day but um yeah stay tuned for that um very cool so that's the that's the Haslab. so i will try to tune in and watch that i've got like 
two big things that I'm going to be doing on May the 4th. My uh, local comic book shop has Ray Park coming, and it's literally right across the street from my house. So I'm going to go hang out there. And then uh, me and like three of my buddies uh, got tickets to go see Phantom Menace in theaters. Nice. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That too. That's going to be a big weekend for Star Wars. Yeah. Um, I saw it in 3D when it came out in 2012. Uh, that was the last time I saw it in the theater. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I hope they do the other ones too, because I definitely want to see Attack of the Clones again on the theater and Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Well, they did. They said it was in local, some like depending on what theater it was that they were doing. Yeah. The um, marathon. Yeah, they're thinking about doing the marathon. I, as much as I would love to, but that's just a lot of movies. Yeah, I probably watch like a few and then like nap in between some of them and then wake up and watch the rest. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's too long. There's no way I could do that. I won't be able to sit for like more than like one movie on it. Like, I mean, yeah, I don't know if I could even sit for like two movies. Like I, yeah. I need to get up and like move around, but um, like I honestly wanted to go to Disney for May the Fourth, but it was just, you know, I thought about it. I went a couple of years ago on May the Fourth, and it was just way too packed. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, so you really didn't get to like really enjoy it. Yeah, you're around people and having a good time, but like I felt that this year, since the fact that Ray Park was gonna be literally across the street from my house, I figured I'd go there with you know like my boyfriend, my friends. We go stand in line get to hang out with Ray Park for a little bit and then, you know, go to the movies and then come back home and figure something else to do. Yeah. Looks like uh, Jason will be going to Disney on May the 4th. Very nice. Nice. As long as you find, find time to tune in to me reacting to the um, Trade Federation Starship HasLab. Oops. Uh, that's going to be releasing uh, that day. I'm just kidding. It's not that um yeah very cool pico b1 i love that it's over the weekend is this me we're going to get tales of the empire every saturday shut the front door i mean i don't know that's a good question that is a very good question so why don't we switch gears here and we'll, we'll talk about that stuff but before we do that um it's time for our weekly droid update i need to i need to find some sort of a a little thing to throw in here um <laughs> about that Have like a droid run across the screen yeah i need to find something i'm trying to see what i have here um let's see which of these could work for that How, we'll just go with this here yes i bet you have my clunky yeah that works <laughs> <laughs> all right so here's our droid update for um for this week um, so I've shown this guy before, but I haven't shown him with this head. Um, this is the blue Droid Depot Galaxy's Edge Astromech Droid, um, which I got on offer up. Uh, of course, the blue one is discontinued, so that was the only way I could get him. Um, and then I had this head um, from my my bounty hunter that gets me stuff at, at Galaxy's Edge. He got me this head. Uh, on a different droid body. What I'm trying to do here is make a Star Tours droid. I was looking at the um, the designs of the Star Tours droid, like the like the uh, the flight attendant WA7 droid, and yeah, you know the the old Captain Rex and the uh, the newer one that like is supposed to is supposed to fly the vehicle before C3PO gets in it, and they all have blue bodies with silver and orange. So. I was like, I need to make one of those. So I started with the blue body, the blue blue legs, blue center leg, and then the clear orange dome I put here. So I guess it's technically an R3, but his backstory is going to be that he was um, he worked at Star Tours and now he is retired here to the cantina. Um, but I'm trying to get orange panels. So I do have some of these panels off right now because I want to get more orange. He's already got blue. He's got silver. He needs a little more orange, so that's kind of my goal with this guy is to get some. And they're discontinued, so you can't buy them at Droid Depot anymore. And there's some ones that people make custom, but I kind of want to find the original, original ones. So once I do that, he'll be complete. I'll give him a name designation, personality chip, and all that. But, um, yeah, right now he's just kind of bare bones until I figure that out. But I wanted to show and tell because he is a work in progress. And, um, 
yeah, this is my Star Tours Aster McDroid. And I was I was inspired by, by my friend Dan O from the Dan O channel, um, who has a similar Star Tours droid that he painted like from scratch. That looks awesome. That's really um, cool. And um yeah, so stay tuned. Work in progress. Um, I hope that I have orange panels on him before too long and I'll show the final product when he's finished, but just wanted to show a little update of my Star Tours droid right there. <laughs> um, everybody's saying McClunky now in the chat. Love it. Um, very cool. Very cool. All right. Our next focus here. The Acolyte is coming. We saw the uh, teaser trailer uh, for this new Disney Plus Star Wars series uh, a couple weeks ago. And, yeah, I mean, this is this is kind of a different era of, of live-action Star Wars that we've never seen before. It goes way earlier than any live-action we've ever seen before in the Star Wars timeline. Um, yeah, teaser's out, poster's out. Nilda, what are your thoughts on the Acolyte? So I had posted something like once the trailer had dropped because I was just so annoyed that it was like less than two seconds and people were already bashing it badly. Um, I'm I enjoyed watching the trailer. I enjoyed seeing Carrie Ann Moss as a Jedi. I think that's quite interesting, especially, you know, she already has the martial arts background with the Matrix. So I feel like her transition to learning to become a Jedi was a lot smoother. Um, but I'm going into when the show does start, I'm going to go into it with an open mind and just wanting to learn the new characters. I do have a few of the High Republic comics, so I am kind of a little caught on with some of the characters that maybe they might be bringing up, which I know there's only one character from the comics that's actually going to be on the show. But I'm just happy to see something new of Star Wars that, you know, I'm not like I'm not saying I'm sick and tired of the Skywalker, you know, segments, but I it's good to finally see something different and new. And, you know, I'm rooting. I'm hoping that it's actually really good and not a disappointment for some of the stuff that we've received. But so far for the what was it like an eight second trailer? It looked more like it was more of a martial arts style Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely got like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon vibes from it. Yes. Um, but uh, that's cool. I mean, I'm I'm all for something different. I mean, I love this era that they've been playing around in. You know, um, the Mandoverse like like time frame. But you know, now we've seen. The Mandalorian, three seasons, The Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, you know, with the second season coming, the movie that's coming. Um, I think Skeleton Crew takes place in that time frame as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's all That's all great, but I'm really happy that they're branching out from that and going to other eras. Um, especially something that takes place way before episode one, you know, something like way back. Um that has me excited. Like that idea that it, this is just a fresh thing, whether or not there's familiar, a familiar character or two, possibly. Um, if we look at this poster here, I think the lightsaber hilt is kind of an indication that that's possible. Yeah. Um, but um, it's kind of a fresh, clean slate, right? Like, you know, even the Mandalorian is, is that the whole story is basically what, you know, a result of what happens uh, from the Galactic Civil War and the prequels and the original trilogy. But this is like a, a different time frame. Like they could do anything with this. And I think for me that that's kind of like a really like fresh uh, and exciting sort of um, thing to explore. And that's, you know, like that's what I was trying to say before. It's something new and fresh. So it's exciting where, you know, like when the Mandalorian first came out, when everybody watched it, the first episode, we didn't know what we were getting into. We didn't know what was the storyline behind it. And we ended up loving it so much. So that's why, you know, like I had made a post a while back when this trailer first came out that like I people should just go into it open minded and check it out first before we make drastic opinions as to what it was like people were commenting saying this looks woke 
Um, you know, I had somebody one day comment to me privately on direct message saying, you know, like I didn't see any, what was the quote? They said, I didn't see any white, um, actors. So I had to like go onto IMBD and circle all the actors. And I'm like, there's four white actors. There's like two Asians. There's one black, like it's a whole, you know, it's a diversity of actors that are on this. So it's like, I don't know. I just, like I said, I want to go into this, watching this with an open mind and seeing something that's new that is not part of the Skywalker saga. Yeah. That, that, that's funny though. Like, like you watch a, a fresh Star Wars teaser mm -hmm. trailer and that's, that's where your mind goes. Like that's just, to me, that's crazy, but yeah. And like, you know, I even said it to the person I was like, you know, I, I said, you know, this is reasons why certain people have lost certain interest or love before the Star Wars because of some of the negativity that some people say on there. And I get it. We're, we're all human. We're allowed to have our own opinions. You know, that's what makes for good topics like this. But I feel like when it's something that we absolutely know nothing about, they haven't fully disclosed to us what is the premise, the storyline behind this. I feel like we should just always go into an open mind and see first for what it is before we make our opinions. Because the same thing happened with the Ahsoka show. Everybody was like, this is going to be terrible. This is going to be trash. They're going to ruin it like how they did Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I'll be quite honest with you, when that episode happened where we got to see a live version of the Clone Wars, I've never seen so many people posting on their feeds, hysterically crying, you know, oh my God, I'm seeing Clone Wars for live action. And that episode ended up having the highest rating uh, audience in any Star Wars show. So I feel like, and that was something that everybody immediately bashed before it came out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we need more of that too. I would not complain if they did like more like Clone Wars era, like live action. Yes. yes. Uh, like, like honestly, like I'd, I'd probably be more excited for that than anything else, but. Oh, it, I, I'll send it to you. But like, I was hysterically crying in my living room. Like my boyfriend thought that I was having a heart attack. He was like, are you okay? And I was like, it's the Clone Wars in live action. Like, <laughs> you're watching this right now. And mind you, like, I'm I'm dating somebody who's not, the, you know, like, he knows about Star Wars. But, like, when I try to explain to him about certain shows, he just looks at me like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, I look like Charlie Day from, uh, what is it? It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> with the boards. And I'm, like, trying to explain to him. That's funny. <laughs> yeah i'm excited for it um uh, i'm i'm you know like i said any anything like fresh that's so like not you know it's a clean slate they can do anything they want with this time frame so i'm all here for it let's see what happens and it'll be nice to have star wars during like the beginning of summer like a like a summer yes. star wars series it's really cool and i feel like we'll have this you know, we're going to get other shows as well. So I feel like when this show ends, we'll get another show. And the same thing, like with Skeleton Crew, we absolutely know nothing about Skeleton Crew. We just know that it has a amazing cast. Did we lose Victoria? Oh, it was like she did. I, uh, I fell into the world between worlds, but I'm okay. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was, I was with Anakin <laughs> for a minute. Um, but I'm back. Um, yeah, it's not the first time that's happened, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're live. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. And yeah, no, I, I agree with everything you were just uh, you were just saying. With uh, you know, those of you who are hanging out with us still, thank you. The 42 of you that are left, um, Thanks, thank you guys. for being here with us. We definitely appreciate it. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, and also to Nilda as well. Do it. <laughs> All right, so, um, okay, we're gonna switch to our next uh, little focus here um, because there was another, there was another teaser that came out this week. And this one, like, out of nowhere, like, wow. Out of nowhere. Tales of the Empire. I'm so ready for this. Yeah, this, um, this was 
this, this was a surprise. Surprise yeah. to be sure, but a welcome one. Um, yeah, like really surprising. You know- you know what the sad part is? So I'm so embarrassed. So like nobody in my job really knows that I'm a Star Wars fan. Like in my office, I have like two posters. I have a Revenge of the Sith and I have a Clone Wars poster in my office and that's it. Like I don't have nothing else. Um, And my really good friend Paul sends me the trailer. But the first thing I got in his text message was like, dude, what the WTF? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he was like, look at what I just sent you. And it, I guess because uh, the reception in our medical practice um, is pretty bad on one side of the office, it took a while for this to load. And then I got the alert from Instagram saying that Star Wars just dropped something. So I clicked on that instead. And I looked and I was like, <gasps> and I one coworker looked at me and she's like, are you okay? And I was like, you gotta go. I gotta close the door. I, I, I need, I need... 20 minutes of privacy. <laughs> I ended up closing like my office door to watch this. And I was just like, holy crap. Like this came out of nowhere. There was no teasers. There was no hints out of, out in the galaxy about this. Yeah. Um, I, I know they like, I'm surprised they kept this like the secret that they did. Cause there was like no indication, no hint, nothing at all. Um, and I yeah, found it to and- be funny because one of the other people that I'm supposed to be interviewing, like I know I'm interviewing Amy Allen and, and Michonne, but the next person I'm going to be interviewing is actually the live uh, the live action of uh, Barris. So that's going to be one of my next guests on there. And it was funny because she was telling me, she was like, hey, she was like, we'll, we'll set this up soon. She was like, I have something coming up. And when this announced, I sent her a message immediately on Instagram. And I was like, was this the something else? (laughs) And she, I sent her the poster and she starts hysterically laughing. And she was like, yeah, she was like, I wasn't allowed to like tell anybody. She's like, I'm not a part of it. She was like, but I just couldn't like talk about anything yet. She's like, until they made announcement for this. Yeah, that's that. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see like where they take Barris's story because you know I've been wondering. Like I know we've all been wondering for a long time now. Like like where what happened? Where did things go? Um, yeah, and I've thought for for like a long time now. Like like a Jedi fallen order. Like oh, she's a second sister. Nope. And I thought okay, she's one of the Inquisitors in Obi Wan Kenobi. Like nope. And like like you know you just kind of think like. She's going to come up, but like, no, they've saved it for this apparently. So, um, yeah, no, this, this looks neat. And like, I, I love like that. They're still utilizing the, the voice actors that they are. Yeah. Um, that's just, that's just great. Um, and you know, I mean, not to even mention like, you know, that Vader is going to be in, in some capacity, like, when they said that when in the trailer, when he, he was like, you're going to meet your new master. As soon as I see the boots, I'm like, oh, my God, it's Anakin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, this this looks really cool. I mean, the animation looks great. Yes. Um, I love that they're still utilizing this Clone Wars slash Bad Batch sort of style. Same as they use in Tales of the Jedi. Um. It looks like there's going to be some really intriguing stories here that'll really give us some information. Like, you know, I was saying Barris, but also like Morgan Elsbeth, like kind of seeing more of her background is going to be really cool. Um, of course, having more Thrawn, more, you know, Grand Inquisitor, um, Fourth Sister even. Like, it'll be nice to have some of this filled in. I think Maroc is on the picture also um, here on the poster. So, yes, he is. Maybe he won't be made up of green gas at that point. Um, so maybe we'll get to, we'll get to know a little bit more than than we do about a lot of these characters. Yeah, the one thing that I do love the most is that you know I I know in certain shows they did talk about like how the Inquisitors came to be because some of the Inquisitors were Jedi's that went and turned and became part of the Empire. So I love that you get to see how this started, how they built their relationship with Vader. Yeah, totally. Um, And I love that we get a very young Thrawn. So it's like I've read all the Thrawn books. So I'm like anticipating if this is like the 
certain book of Thrawn that we're going to be getting. Yeah, that, yeah, it's going to be cool. I'm excited. And thankfully, you know, it's May 4th. Like I said, that weekend is a huge weekend for Star Wars. You got yeah. Tales of the Empire. You got the Phantom Menace in, in uh, back in theaters. You've got the HasLab. Like this is going to be a huge weekend. I don't, I can't even think of when the last weekend for star wars was like there was something to this magnitude like this is gonna be insane there's gonna be a lot to talk about like you know after this weekend uh mary i love your comment right here because 100 yes. percent um you know we finally got the balin and the and the shin announced which was awesome which is the ones those are the ones we're all waiting for morgan is the last one that i honestly that i need now that anakin's been announced especially like morgan's the last one i need from ahsoka but my thing is, if we do a Morgan, I want two different face sculpts. I want her as regular, and then I want her as she's transitioning into being a night sister. Yeah, I mean, if they can do that for the for the regular edition, collector edition Jack Sparrow, they can do it for Morgan as well. Totally. Um, yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, I am excited. I am excited. I need to go back and watch the the, the trailer again because I'm thinking about it now. Like, um, yeah, that's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be really yeah. Cool. There's a couple people that I follow on Instagram, and like I was watching. I've probably have seen the trailer now like about ten times just to like nitpick at certain things, and because I know you're gonna rewatch it again. I I won't spoil it for you, or whoever's watching it. Go back and watch it. And as when, um, I guess, like the Inquisitor or the, the main Grand Inquisitor is telling Barris to fight when he throws the lightsaber in the middle and says, like, now they have to fight to prove. Pay attention to that whole scene and look at who Barris is having to fight. Interesting. I need to pay more attention to that myself when I rewatch it. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So we are going to move on to the Bad Batch. Uh, of course, there were two more episodes, I think, this week, right? Was it two? Yeah. Two episodes this week. Yeah. So I um, I, I watched those two episodes and we're not going to talk spoilers as normal because, you know, I know some of you maybe haven't watched it yet, but um, we definitely want to touch on it because like, I feel like the, the last episode, you know, the, it's, it's just like the, the, the genre bending they kind of do with this, like in terms of like going like really like, I don't even know if this is a thing, but like sci-fi noir, I want to kind of want to call it like, it, it's just a really interesting thing to see. Like the whole thing with, um, again, I don't want to spoil anything, but like uh, the, the last episode, like if you, you know, we're back on Tantus and we're seeing things going on in certain facilities, like that whole thing was, was very interesting. And just the way yeah. that they're kind of, it, it's a more, it's almost like a mature, like telling of, of the Bad Batch compared to like the first couple of seasons. And it's really kind of taking it like a new, directions that are just kind of new territory for like animated star wars and i was really i was really i really enjoyed this week's episodes yeah so did i i feel like and it's not ruining anything but i just like the fact that this season we got more of a a darker side of the bad batch like i feel like the first episode was more like you know kitty-ish you know and like most how clone wars was you know you got very kiddie-ish episodes then as they kept leading on more and more it just kept getting darker and darker and i feel like with this with this season we're seeing a very dark side and we get to see how like the empire really is yeah yeah it's um it, it's it's really good and you know the animation itself the music like it's all like really it's like it's like really carefully like crafted like just the yeah. way that they're they're the whole production really is 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 really good and fitting for the final season it reminds me of what they did for season seven of the clone wars um and yeah i'm 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 really looking forward to seeing where things things go i just don't want to i just don't want to cry 
That's all I want. I don't want to cry. Yeah, I mean, but you know, they they did they did do they did kill off tech, right? So I mean, <laughs> I was like this in my living room when it happened, and I was just like, "What did I just witness?" <laughs> I do miss tech this season, I will say. What is it? I don't have any more beer, but I was going to be like, pour one for our friend tech. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, cheers to tech. Cheers um, to tech. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's it's ramping up. How many more episodes are there? Do you know? I'm trying to remember. I think we have two. Let me see. I think it's two. Okay. Oh man, that's that's rough. Just two more. Oh man. We will see. Oh no, um, last last episode is no, we have one, two, three, four. We have four episodes left. Last episode is May 1st. Oh my gosh. So you're gonna give us a series finale on May 1st probably destroy us and then hit us with happy thoughts on May the 4th. That's a good point. <laughs> um yeah. Sorry if you didn't know that Adam. That's that was a, that was season 2, right Nilda that that we lost tech the end of yeah. season 2. Um yeah, yeah. Had to have known. They post that all over social media. Yeah, he's been gone for a while. He's tech. been gone um, for a while. We yeah. You have a one-year warning. Yes, yet a one-year. Sorry, Adam. Um, but <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm excited to see how it ends. And yeah, it's, it's great though that they're going to continue the content with, um, the Tales of the Empire and then uh, the Acolyte. It's going to be kind of like a steady stream of Star Wars content, and I'm all, I'm all here for that. Like, give it to us. Mm hmm. Um, very cool. Well, what do we have next? Let's take a look here. Let's see what we've got next on our list. Do we have anything else? I'm not even sure if there's anything left. Let's see. Are we done? Are we, um, are we finished here? We're not done yet. Nope. <laughs> got another segment left. We're going to talk about new acquisitions added to our collections. Like I said, I've been off for, um, or what did I say earlier, uh, off the air for, for the last few weeks or, or two weeks. So we're going to talk about um, things that I've added to my collection. Nilda, have you added anything to your collection? While, while you tell us about that, um, everyone in the chat, let us know what you've added to your collection recently because we want to we wanna see it. Um, but Nilda, what do you have that's new in your in your collection? I think I only picked up was the Lego set of the Millennium Falcon. Ooh, nice. Yeah. So I was actually going to build that after we were done here. <laughs> I was going to attempt to build it. Um, and then today, um, it's not a toy, but I had to, my car of almost nine years decided to finally part its ways with me. Aww. So I got a brand new car today. Um, it's white. So I decided to name it, you know, trooper as stormtrooper. So I'm going to get like cool decals in the back and like make it kind of look like a stormtrooper, you know, assemble car. Nice. That's really cool. My car kind of looks like a stormtrooper. It's like white and black accents and it, um, it's not what I was going for, but ultimately it kind of looks like a stormtrooper. Yeah, um, that's what mine looked like. It's like white with uh, black accents. So I'm nice. thinking of, like maybe getting like just the helmet, just full helmet visor and just put it in the back and then maybe have like Empire logos on the side of the car and then that's it. Love it. You know, I'm going to call mine a clone trooper because nobody does that. Oh, okay. Yeah, mine's a clone trooper. Um, yeah, right on. Well, that is, that's cool. <laughs> um, so for me... I um I love your question here, Jason. What pickups from Texas? So yeah, I was in Texas to see my family, and I didn't. The only things that I picked up, and you know, I, I I didn't even think about it. I forgot to bring them with me, but they're in the other room. But I did pick up three um Jurassic World, like the little attack pack, the little dinosaurs, like the the nine dollar range ones. Uh, I picked those up, and I got them at HCB in in Texas at two different 
locations. Um, and I hadn't seen them at the stores here, so that was kind of cool. But um, that's about all, that's all I got in Texas, I think. Um, but um, I'm going to jump to my Instagram because I did post this, I think, after the last stream. Um, but the Vintage Collection Count Dooku, I got the whole wave, um, which is um, Finn from from the Rise, from the uh, Force Awakens, Clone Trooper from Attack of the Clones, Count Dooku from Attack of the Clones, and um, it has um, Kazian Andor from Rogue One. But this Count Dooku, like, this is a top 10, three and a quarter inch action figure. Like, I'm not exaggerating. Like, this is an amazing figure. And when you think about, you know, oh, you know, he's he's an old he's an old guy, um, you know, with the lightsaber. It doesn't matter. The figure itself, the execution is top notch. This is an amazing, amazing, amazing release. Um, I love how he has the lightsaber hilt, which plugs into his belt. He's got the the light the lit up lightsaber he's got the lightning in one hand um it's just really really well executed i love everything about this figure and i had fun as you can see here just kind of posing it and um creating different little scenarios with it because the figure oh, is I just love that one it's great um they did an awesome awesome job with this with this um I, i'm totally stoked with with this figure it's the best one in the wave um, which isn't really surprising. Um, but yeah, it is just, the figure is everything, honestly. It's really, really good. And I ended up going back, because, you know, as we were talking about earlier, you know, I when, with the vintage collection, this is the only line I do this with. I buy one to open and then one to keep on the card. But this figure is so good that I went I went and bought two more on oh, Amazon. Wow. Um, because I needed one for the speeder, as you can see here. And then I just wanted an extra because it's just excellent. It's an amazing, amazing figure. Uh, definitely worth the wait. I know some people didn't think we needed a Count Dooku, and I kind of felt like that to some extent because the last ones they did back in 2005 um, were pretty decent. Um, but this one is just like, like I'm saying, a top 10, like all time figure at this point. It's just that good. It looks great. And I love that he's actually like extremely posable. Yeah, he is. He's he's very, very posable. And when it comes to a character that comes with the lightsaber, you really need that. So I'm glad that they yeah. that they did that here. Yeah, and the way you have him on that speeder, it looks phenomenal. Yeah, and that's an like, old right? speeder. That's that's from 2003. Yeah. I saw I that you've been collecting like a whole bunch of the ships recently. Yes, I've been I've been so you know, I I have been collecting steadily since since 96. That's when I started. But, um, you know, when I was a kid, but I, I don't have everything, especially when it comes to vehicles. So yes, I have slowly, but surely been adding like vehicles like this. that I didn't pick up over the years. V-Wing Starfighter, like that was one. This is in the Bad Batch and the color scheme is slightly different, but it's very close to this here. So I don't know why Hasbro doesn't re-release this with the Bad Batch, like packaging and everything. Cause it would, it would probably do really well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I am slowly but surely picking some up. I actually got some stuff delivered today, not vehicles, but older, um, Star Wars three and three quarter collection stuff that I will show off next week. Cause I haven't even opened the boxes, um, yet for those. Um, other than that, what else do I have? That's recent. Um, I got, I got a Godzilla. That's kind of rare for me. I don't really buy Godzilla, but, um, this is a really cool one. And actually I was inspired by my, my nephew. He has this and, it's a really cool toy. Like, I mean, I love, I, I, I love like unique, exciting, like great toys mm -hmm. to me. It doesn't matter if it's like what it is, honestly, like I haven't even seen this movie yet. Like I'm going to see it next week, but, um, this figure, this, this toy is great. He's really big. He's, I, he's like, I'm looking at him right now. He's probably like 14 inches tall, but like he lights up, he uh, he blows like the the smoke out of his mouth. He walks with the remote controller, like just a really cool toy. And you know, I I love great toys, and that's why I had to pick this one up. I swear, my favorite line when it came to all the Godzillas was um, when NECA had the line for Godzilla before they ended that whole contract. I went to every Target and was trying to acquire all of them because I thought some of the sculpts were insane yeah that was that was a cool time too um 
yeah, it's a really neat toy. Like, I, I don't think I'm going to, I'm probably I'm not planning to open anytime soon, but it is, you know, you can still turn it on and everything. Like, it, it's, oh, just wow. a, it's just really great. Like, I'll have it right here. So I'll just like grab it. Does it make any noise? It's really big. Um, oh, that's a big boy. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's solo lay out here and I'll show you guys. Um, I'll show you guys what it, it, I can't get it to walk because it's in the box and blow this book. I would need to open it, but it does do this here if I can get it to work. <laughs> I like that. It's cool. Where did you get that? Walmart.com $44.99. I'm about to log on to Walmart and get one. You're going to log on to Walmart and get one? Yeah. Do it. <laughs> I went through this phase like two weeks ago where I was on uh, HBO Max and I was watching like all the old school Godzilla films. And my boyfriend just looks at me and he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm watching Godzilla. And he's like, really? And I said, yeah. I'm like, it's a cute little dinosaur just wrecking havoc. And then I watched the, uh, the other one with the uh, turtle, Gamera. And I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah, no, that, it, it's cool stuff. Um, I ended up even buying like, you know, like the small like King Kong here, like this one right here. Um, this is like the the ten dollar figures, but this too, this is like this figure has no business being this good for ten dollars. To be honest with you, like it's yeah. it's got great articulation. I mean, he looks like he looks great. He's painted very well, sculpted really well. And you can pose him in like some really nice like looking poses. I'm sure you could take him outside and get some really decent photography with him because he's just for 10 bucks, like they did a really, really good job. <laughs> I'm blaming you. I found it. Nice. Yeah, it's 45 bucks. That's actually not bad. And it's big. Yeah, it's it's big. Yeah, it shows like the tail is like this long. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely gonna pick that up. I like it. And I just like that it like lights up all like pink across the way. Yeah, no, it, it it's I, I really like it. Like it's um I don't I don't usually buy it collect, you know, Godzilla and King Kong and all that, but you know, my nephew has the whole line. He has the entire like line that they've done for this new movie. So that's that's pretty cool. And I mean I'm kind of tempted to get get more of them, like at least like one of each of the characters from this new movie, but I don't know yet mm -hmm. if I'm gonna do it. I got to send you the Instagram page to my buddy who lives here in South Florida. He has probably the largest Godzilla collection I've ever seen. Yes, please do. He's got like a four bedroom house just dedicated to Godzilla. And I feel like your nephew would die in that house. Like it's phenomenal. I, I remember when I first time met Jesse and he would tell me about his collection and I truly was like, Oh yeah, it's, you know, it's just like a regular toy collection. And then I walked to his house and got to see this thing. And it was like being in a Godzilla museum. Wow. Yeah. I'll send you his page so you can check it out. It's wild. Yes. Yeah. Please, please do. I'd be really curious to, um, to see that. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I'm going to buy more. I mean, that's the only, like, I think that's like the really like big, like ticket, like toy that they've made. But, you know, I am tempted for sure to get more, um, I really shouldn't, but I really want to get like kind of like one of each character, like in, just in that ten dollar range. But we'll see. Maybe next social hour, I'll have added more. <laughs> we'll see. I want more, and I know I shouldn't. <laughs> Stop being a collector. I know. It's so tough sometimes, like going to the stores and seeing stuff, and I'm just like, oh man, I really want this, but I'm like, I gotta be good. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see it. Um, yeah, so I think that's about all I've added. I mean, I, I can't think of anything um, else other than like what I haven't opened up yet to show. But um, yeah, that pretty much does it. So I mean, if unless there's any, um, I'll just leave this open for any last like Q and A, any questions that you guys want to ask. You've been going almost two hours, so thank yeah. you guys that are still here hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Um. Thank you for, for uh, letting me torment you for the last two hours. Um, but yeah, if there's any like final questions you guys want to ask, 
comments, concerns, if there's any complaints, um, direct them to someone else. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it definitely has very cool effects, Trevor. I, 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 I'm, I'm really impressed with it for the price. I mean, like, they could have, they could, probably could have sold that for a lot more than forty five dollars. Like, honest, like, honestly, really, but they didn't. You know, so I mean, I'm, I'm really pleased with what they did there. Um, and I also asked earlier, what new things have you guys added to your collections? Um, so um, Adam says, I finally got the gentle giant seated Thrawn statue. That is very cool. That is very that cool. is that is something that's been on my like I really want it because on one of my like bookshelves that I have, I have started collecting all the gentle giants. Um, what is it called? Star Wars Rebels. And Thrawn was one of the characters that I was missing. So I've been debating if I want to get him. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, yeah, that, that yeah, that would be really cool on the shelf. Yeah, and I love that he's just sitting there like this. <laughs> like, you know, Matt, you know, contemplating what he's going to do. Yeah, so cool. Um, Let's see here. Fit Maddox says, I got Dooku last week. Very nice. Um, Travis has picked up the Geonosian, an old Geonosian warrior. Very nice. Oh, wow. There's a lot of great stuff that they're never going to make again that, you know, even though they're making less these days and it's less likely they're going to make like some random background characters like they used to do. The great thing is that there's like a wealth of hundreds of figures they've made over the years and vehicles and play sets and all sorts of stuff that, you know, we can still go back and pick up. So there's always something to buy. Um, Nick and I says, I got the Huyang Yang and TVC is awesome. Very cool. I don't have that one yet. Um, that Matic got the TVC Django on the way. Very nice. I got an email from Pulse today saying that it's going to ship soon, but I don't know when. Um, Paul says clone trooper two pack X-Men 97 wave two. Very nice. Very nice. I'm watching X-Men 97 on Disney plus. Oh, it's so good. Yes, it is. It is. I remember yeah, it's a major throwback for me. I remember being a kid and like getting out of school, hauling ass home, doing homework, and then immediately watching that, watching like all Nickelodeon shows, um, anything that was like on PBS. So it's it's quite interesting to see it, you know, back on TV. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy that it's even back, honestly. Um, Jeff says. Got Dooku last week and Django today. Some G.I. Joe classified vamp and retro juke. I don't know G.I. Joe. No, I don't know if you do, but I don't know G.I. Joe. So when people eh, tell me they I got G.I. So. Joe, I'm just like, okay, that sounds cool. But I, I the only thing I have is the Sky Striker. That's the only thing I bought. It was the Hazlab Sky Striker because it, it looked cool. But um, like I said, I love great toys. I don't care what, what it's from, you know. Um, Janine says the TVC N1 is arriving tomorrow. Nice. Cause there's price drops on that one. Awesome. That's a great one. Um, Pico B1, uh, TVC 309 just came in from Amazon for them on cards. Totally mangled. Ooh, sorry to hear that. What is TVC 309 though? I'm, I'm trying to remember what, I don't know what the numbers are. Like I forget what is 309. Remind me please. Um, Fatmatic also got the clone trooper two pack from target. Very cool. Um, very nice. Um, so let's see right here. Um, you're welcome, madam. Thank you for, for hanging out. Thank um, you. Nilda, a question for you from Janine. Uh, when is your next show? Uh, so yeah, my next show is going to be on April 11th. It's going to be at 7 PM. It's going to be with, uh, Amy Allen who played Ayala Sakura and then with uh, Michonne Barion, who played Aurora Singh. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm like super nervous, but I know I'm going to have a good time. That's going to be great. I'm definitely going to tune into that. Um, uh, one thing I am curious about is I know that Ayla Sakura had a uh, cut line of dialogue in Revenge of the Sith that they actually filmed. So I'm curious to see if she talks about that and, and see if she yeah. remembers what she said. That was one of my questions that I was going to ask her. I had like a whole breakdown of stuff that I wanted to ask because like I feel um, they always get asked the same questions. So there was just like, you know, I rewatched 
you know, Phantom Menace. I rewatch Revenge of the Sith again just to get, and, you know, I have a few of the comic books and I went online and did a lot of research just to like specifically ask them questions that I feel like people I've never asked them. So it's going to be quite interesting. And that was one of my questions that I wanted to ask her was that, you know, she was supposed to have some dialogue and it got cut. So I have a picture with her back from 2007. I'll have to send it to you so you can, you can check that out. But yeah, it's, um, that was a really cool time. Like, yeah. Talking. To her I'm mom. actually supposed to be going to Texas. I think it's in the end of July. There is this um, really cool convention going on called Rebel Scum. Um, and they're bringing in like an insane amount of Star Wars actors, um, you know, like some from the vintage, you know, like from the OT line. Um, some of them are from the prequels. Some of them are from the sequels. Um, and Amy and um, Michonne are both going to be there. So it's going to be great to like, you know, do the interview with them and then to go hang out with them, you know, in person. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that is really cool. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for that that show. I'm definitely going to tune in. Um, Jason says, great show. Cool new guest to follow. Awesome. Links are down below. Thank you. Um, Jeff, it's been great. Fun stream. Uh, Troy, if the HasLab is the cantina, they will need to release many figures. We haven't got many in the vintage collection. What do you think, Victoria? I mean, yeah, of course they're going to need to release more cantina aliens. Speaking of which, did you guys see my new video? I published it this morning. Five Star Wars Cantina characters that need to be released in the Vintage Collection. If you haven't checked it out, video is up. Go check it out. Let me know what you think. Comment. Let me know what your top five are. Um, Adam says, uh, Thrawn looks great on Bookshelf, and they have a couple codes now that he's in stock. I got 20% off. Yeah, I definitely I definitely need to pick that one up. Sweet. Pico V1 says that he got Clone Troopers Phase 1. Very nice. I need to get some more of those. I only have one carded, one loose, but I need to get some more of those. 309 is a Clone Trooper. Okay. Okay. Thank you for letting, confirming that for me. And thank you, Fetmatic. Very cool. <laughs> well, hey. It's been two hours and three minutes on the dot. Um, Nilda, thank you so much for coming on to the show and for hanging out with us. Thank you for having for me gracing on. us with your presence. We really appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you for putting up with me. You were great. I had a great time. <laughs> me too. It's been a blast. Let's do it again. Let's do it again for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, and to all of you guys that are tuning in, thank you so much for being with us. I know some of you begin, have been here since the top of the show. Thank you so much. It's been a blast. I appreciate your comments, your questions, your concerns. And all of that stuff. I don't think there were any concerns, but thank you for nonetheless. Um, Nilda, one more time. Where can everybody go to find you on the interwebs? Uh, so on Instagram, I'm under as Nilda underscore Nilda underscore listens. Um, I fell in love with the little fat kid who decided to yell at his mother and say, listen, Linda. <laughs> and that's been my name ever since, since my name is Nilda. And then um, on YouTube, you can find me under as a uh, appetite for collectibles. Awesome. And once again, we have links down below. So you guys make sure you click on them, follow her on uh, YouTube and on Instagram. Uh, we will be back next week for another episode of Cantina Social Hour. Thanks again. Uh, no matter where you're tuning in from, Add in the Galaxy, as always, thank you for being with us here in the cantina. Have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Be well, be safe. May the force be with you. Uh -huh. And we will see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.